You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, God damn it! Get the point good. And now... Bend over. Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Oh yeah, I know, y'all are bitching because I have Christmas music playing. And you know what? Tough patooties. Tough patooties. I like Christmas music. (laughs) And I think, yeah, I think my mic is pretty loud. Plenty loud. That's for damn sure. Oh well. Y'all are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on RealLibertyMedia.com, channel 3. And I'm using my new headphones, and oh my God, oh, they are amazing. It's like little cloud cushions on my ears. (laughs) I know, it's the simple things in life that tickle me. Okay, I'm tickled most of the time anyway. What the hell? Oh, yes, it is the season to be wheezing and hacking and crouping. And I apparently spent entirely too much time among the general public and in strange areas. And so I caught a bug and was not able to play Wednesday night. I was doing an awful lot of hacking and wheezing and coughing and and acking. And I tell you what, my diaphragm got a hell of a workout. Let me tell you, I mm, it was not fun. Um, but if y'all would, if someone would please in the RLM chat, just tell me real quick if I'm coming across okay, if I sound okay, because please, I really like these headphones. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm so easily entertained. They go, Vinny, I said easily. Uh, and you know what? Seeing as how I'm being easily entertained over here on Twitter, I see that um, RLM Barman. Hey, thank you, dude. He tweeted me out. I truly appreciate that, Barman. You're so awesome. And I got a couple new stalkers over here. Woo woo. That's pretty cool. Um, Thanks, Rob. Cool. What did I get? Okay, let's see. What did I get? I got them from Amazon. (laughs) And I used the Amazon button on the side of the RLM channel. So y'all, if you you really want to do Grimmy a favor and you shop at Amazon like I do because I live out in the boonies and that's where you need to shop sometimes when you live out in the boonies, I I do have one thing that my leash isn't very long. But other than that, you know, I really like these headphones. I really do. They are um, Nubwo, N-U-B-W-O, Gaming Headset N7. And, I mean, they're kind of funky looking, but, oh, my God, they're comfy. They are very comfy. (laughs) And they were only, let's see, $35.99. Um, what the hell? Whoa, wait a minute. I'm going to have to call them and do a little bit of bitching because no, that shipping is not, shipping is not supposed to be the same as, I'm going to have to call and do some bitching. I'm I'm looking at the little ticket there. But in any case, you're lagged. Ah, okay. Oh, Rob, you are a very clever individual. That's why you have the bubbler. You got bubbler duty. Just saying. Okay. Um, oh, wow. This just, I'm i am like, it doesn't feel like an echo chamber or nothing. Whoo, I'm liking this. Okay, back to Twitter. Hey, Twitter. Thank you, everyone. And the uh, my new followers, um, who were they? They're both essential oil people, which, yeah. Yay. And I happen to have some oils going in my diffuser right now. I have eucalyptus and my breathe blend and some ginger and a little bit of rosemary going in there and some cypress to help with the breathing. Yeah, because 
<clears throat> kind of sort of needing that after after the last few days and thanks her i'm glad i feel so much better too no fever no nothing yay so um i'm gonna go ahead and close twitter because yeah i really didn't see a whole hell of a lot on there that i needed to <laughs> pay attention to hello anybody over in mines if you are listening in i don't see anybody saying hey or clicking or any of that other fun shit on my uh my little link that i posted but that's okay that's okay because if you don't mind it don't matter it's kind of a mind over matter thing and well you know a lot of times i don't mind so it really don't matter thanks rob works nubwo n7 yes that's it grimmy that's it okay let's see so, over here in the corner pocket, let me see if there's anybody. Nope, nobody over there is playing either. There's lots of people logged in, but I don't see anybody playing. And somebody apparently already beat me to the duck. I know I have this duck fetish. Quack, 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 quack. So, uh, anyone pushing transgenderism on anyone below the age of 18 is committing child abuse. Yes, KD Troxel, he commented that on the something that i posted over on the effin site that i gotta agree with you speaking of the effin site has anybody else heard um i saw a little notice on facebook the other day that bobby bain has hurt himself bobby dear sending out healing energy to you sweetheart apparently he fell uh, i'm thinking off a roof i didn't see you know there wasn't a whole lot of details there but mm, damn it bobby damn it was there something mentioned over on that FN site? Anil posted it over on Facebook. Um, and that's the only way I know it. Um, but he had apparently fallen and uh, broke a hip. They had a picture of him laying in a hospital bed. And it's like, oh, damn it, dude. You need to stop that right now. I said. So... In any case, sending out healing vibes to Bobby. And thank you, Grimmy, for sharing me over there on that FN site. I really do appreciate it. Uh, let's see, who else is over here? I see Cantrell is posting pictures of his lovely little flamingos again. And there's Cowboy Tech and Katie Troxel and Java Doctor. We're all over here. Hey, Bobby was logged in not too long ago. So hopefully he's doing, well, yeah. Breaking a hip ain't exactly doing good. Shit. Shit, dude. Those that uh, matter don't mind and those that mind don't matter. That is so true, Rob. So true. So, um, let's see. You know what? I'm just going to I'm gonna click on the Amazon link so I can see what I... There they are. I'll, is that them? No, it's this one. It's this one. Just a sec. I looked in my browsing history. And now it's froze. <laughs> Go figure. Oy. Yeah. Um, yes. Let's see. Oh, Bobby did mention it. Oh, okay. So I just missed it. Okay. Well, I missed an awful lot because I was like, yeah, out of commission for a while there. So, thanks, Grim. Okay, uh, and I'm still not happy with, um, f uh, what is it, Firefox. Because, yeah, they updated on my computer, and I'm not real keen about that. So, now I'm working off of Opera, which is being kind of a poopy head right now. It's... Um, Okay, doing the swirly thing, doing the swirly. Let's see if it'll let me scroll down. No, it will not. All right, Opera, come on, cut it out. That's enough of that shit. Damn it. <sighs> I know it's because my malware bytes is upda updating in the background. And, well, you know, older computer and shit internet service. <laughs> So you're going to have to deal with me just jibber-jabbering for a little bit until Opera will let me start moving along and doing a few other things on my computer, like scrolling, you know, those necessary things. <laughs> 
Come on, Opera. Let me click on another link at least. Damn it. <sighs> okay. Well, it is a Freak of Friday, and it is also the first of December. Booyah. So it is the beginning of that holiday season, as if that doesn't really start around Labor Day these days, because, you know, you got to get that commercialism in, don't you know? Come on, Opera. Are you going to be a poo-poo head or what? Well, it lets me reduce it. <laughs> and then I enlarge it and I got nothing. <laughs> I love this job. Uh, good thing you guys ain't paying for this shit. Okay, so seeing as how it's going to be a poo-poo head and I can't really you know, read anything because it's still thinking because, yeah, shit internet and all that other fun stuff. Um, I'm going to read a little something from this book that I just got that I haven't actually read yet. Damn it all. Uh, in this generation defining self-help guide, a superstar blogger shows us that the key to being happier is to stop trying to be positive all the time and instead to become better at handling adversity. Hmm. So I think I'm fairly good at handling adversity because usually I just laugh at them and say, you know what, you want to be a butt munch, that's fine. But uh, I'm getting kind of tired of your, okay, opera, I'm getting tired of your shit. Come on. Wakey, wakey. Don't make me restart you. You're going to really piss me off. Damn it. Damn it. <sighs> Maybe I'm going to have to just, because Opera just did an update. See, every time they do updates, it feet buttles me, and it just gets very infuriating, you know? Hmm. In any case, so back to this. So for decades, we've been told that the positive thinking is the key to a happy, rich life. But those days are over. Are you ready for this? First F-bomb of the night. Fuck positivity, says Mark Manson. Let's be honest. Sometimes things are fucked up and we have to live with it. And for the past few years, Manson, via his wildly popular blog, has been working on correcting our delusional expectations for ourselves and for the world. So, come on, cut it out. Damn thing. Okay. Mm. In any case, Manson advises us. Oh, wait a minute. I skipped way too far. Where am I at now? <laughs> Okay, he now brings his hard-fought wisdom to the groundbreaking book. Manson, not to be confused with Charlie, makes the argument, backed by both academic research and well-timed poop jokes, that improving our lives hinges not on our ability to turn lemons into lemonade, but on learning to better stomach lemons. Human beings are flawed and limited, as he writes. Not everybody can be extraordinary. There are winners and losers in society, and some of it is not fair or your fault. So, there we go. Opera has finally decided to behave. Damn it all. It's okay, I'm connected again. Thank you. Um, oh, shit. Am I going to have to log in again? God dang it. It says it's okay I'm logged in again, but I can't see everybody. So, I'm going to have to reload. Damn it, damn it, damn it. And see, I'm going to have to do my chatzilla again because, yeah. When Firefox did its update, it also dushed my chatzilla frickin' P.O.S. Anyway. <laughs> Equal. <laughs> la, 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 
la la la. Don't you just love it when I'm bored and I have to sing to you? <laughs> I know you don't. Okay, back to where was I at? Okay. Um, da -da 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 -da. Okay, Manson advises us to get to know our limitations and accept them. This, he says, is the real source of empowerment. Once we embrace our fears, our faults, and our uncertainties, once we stop running from and avoiding and start confronting painful truths, we can begin to find the courage and confidence we desperately seek. I did not know that I was seeking courage and confidence and yeah, okay. Whoa, dude. Um, what's that, Moosey? Oh, it happened to you too? I don't strive for perfection. Well, actually, Moosey, I do strive for perfection. I am perfect. I am a perfect angel when I want something and a perfect pain in the ass when I don't get it. Therefore, I am perfect. <laughs> Um, oh, cool. I'm going to have to do that, Moosey. Thank you ever so much. Sweet. All righty. What? Um, yeah, right now I'm using the browser version. Just saying. No, it's not. It's not. Uh, <laughs> I'm not using the Chatzilla version, so. Mm. And Moosey, I see lots of stuff. Um, I just. Oop. Yeah. Okay. Now, what the hell is this? I want to go to that. Thank you. And then I want to do that. And then I want to do this. Okay, cool. So. <laughs> okay, now that I've read the front cover of that and I'm actually able to get back to things. Um, I am going to after tonight because, yeah, running late, getting home from work and all that fun shit. But I will go and uh, install an older version of Firefox because I'm not impressed with this new version of Firefox. Mm. And, oh, thanks, Moose. Yeah, um, I did drop out of the chat because frickin' Opera. Yeah, it updated too. So I'm going to have to go into my Opera settings and tell it to stop doing that shit. It's like, God dang it. I mean, I already set my computer to not automatically update because it's like, I like Windows 7. Don't fuck with it, okay? Y'all fucked with shit when you went beyond Windows 7. I don't want to go there. And my other computer has given me fits too. So I said, okay, I'm going to learn Linux. And I'm going to load it on that one. And I'm just, and to hell with Microsoft. I'll just use this one for my broadcasting and use Linux for other shit. And I will get good at it. I will get good. Okay. Um, let's see. Yeah, if I'd used the standalone IRC chat, I know, I would have, Moosey, but... Huh, and maybe I... Hey, hey, maybe I can... I'll do that. I'll do that through the Opera, and I'll do... Because I, I have the standalone on my Firefox, and then when it updated, for some stupid reason, it went away, and it pissed me off. So, Yeah. Um, and so I'll just do a standalone through Opera, and then that way I won't have to worry about it, and I just won't go to Firefox except for, well, there's a couple of things, but, yeah, I know, they keep sticking all that crap in there. Okay, I'm just jibber-jabbering. In any case, Amazon, let me go to my browser history, go to this one, and I will show you. This is, um, okay, we'll go back, and da 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 da, because I don't know that I want to do, okay, oh, what the hell, 
yeah this is the one that I purchased if it sh if it shows it great if it doesn't well poo um, I'm sure I will love Linux you know just from the the things that I was listening to today okay I hope that shows you uh, wipes out really oh man okay I'm going back to the older Firefox can I just uninstall the new one oh well I'll get I'll I'll question you later <laughs> I'm supposed to be doing a show here <laughs> as if that's gonna make a shit and bit of difference to me but um okay and so that's okay that's okay that's okay I'm just checking all my tabs to make sure everything's kosher okay so over here on fakey book I don't see anybody over here on fakey book which is okay that's cool no problemo because I really don't see too many of where's Mary B I know I haven't been around for a while is Mary B not been around for a while is she a busy girl like has a life and all that fun stuff mm. and Sadia then today's his birthday happy birthday Sadia then that's also UK Oliver to those of you that don't know Sadia then um, happy birthday Oliver uh, da -da -da -da. okay I gotta scroll let's see um, cool okay I will pick your guys's brains after I get done on the radio like yeah um, oh thanks Moosey <laughs> oh I can oh Sweet, Grimmy, that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do, because I do not like this new one. Not at all. I mean, the emblem, you know, the, the icon thingy, it's kind of cool looking, but other than that, it just really pisses me off. So, in any case, okay, where do I want to go first? Mm, I don't know. Chloe! Oh, yeah, you know what? I haven't said hi to everyone yet. Have I? <laughs> I'm such a dude squirrel. Okay, you know what? It is Freak of Friday. And seeing as how all the other places, I didn't really see anybody participating and playing. Now to get to where you need to be if you want to give me static and where everybody's already saying hi and you hear them little clickies and that's my little note that, hey, people are saying hey. Uh, over here in the RLM, which is where you need to be if you want to give me static and, you know, you can listen and you can join in the chat. Lots of fun. Barman is right up top and you know Barman is the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world. Also, he is closely followed by... By Cowboy Tech who is just super awesome and he always says he hears pleasant voices I think he needs to get his hearing checked but you know that's just me Grimner is also here and Grimmy is the RLM God don't you know I also see the lovely Moose Girl is here yay and Grimmy and Moose Girl will be on later on this evening I'm hoping I'm hoping they will be on later on this evening for the Freakers Ball and you know because Moosey's a busy girl uh, let's see. What was that? I'm scrolling up. I just finally saw something. It's fucking lame. And <laughs> I'm like, I've already dropped the F-bombs. So, yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, I do not like this. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay, Grimmy. I will have to check that. Allows... To you. Oh, yay! I will do that. Mm -hmm -hmm. Okay. By the way, I am sipping uh, ginseng and turmeric tea, or turmeric, however you wish to pronounce it. And I, I have some local honey in there for a little bit of sweetener, which is helping immensely. Although it has gotten a little bit cool, but it still tastes good. Okay, Beth Z is here. Hey, Beth Z, how are you doing, lady? How's things way up there in the Great White Nort? I hope it's not too white yet, which means snow. I also see Chalcedony is here. Hey, Chalcedony, how you doing, hon? Got a double dip and a Chloe going on here. 
Ah, okay. I'm going to have to write this shit down, guys. Oh, man, I don't have a pen. <laughs> oh, fudgicles. I usually have a pen right close by. But apparently, when I was feeling overachiever mode and organized, I put my pens where they belong. <laughs> Go figure. Oh, okay. Yes, Java Doctor, the latest one does suck. Okay, back to saying hey, seeing as how I'm penless. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I said Chalcedonia. I said double dip in a Chloe. Hi, Chloe, Chloe. Also, see, I'm here. I'm here. I feel like a little who in Whoville. I be Don C is here. Hey, Don, how's it going? How's the pup? Or... Are you puppyless now and just down to doggy? No more of the little bambino puppies. I also see Java, 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 Java Doctor 2 is in the house. How are you doing, sweetheart? And Juana Taco. You know what, hon? That really sounds wonderful because the last two nights I have had chicken and noodles, which chicken and noodle soup is really very good for when you have a cold. There's something, I mean, scientists have proven. Um... I know, Grim. You're at a com <laughs> I can't hear you. Um, <laughs> I'm at a computer. I don't need a pen. Grimmy, you're so funny. <laughs> you have no idea how many notes I have around me because I, I'm old school. <laughs> And I keep getting told that by my children all the time. And I keep telling them, yeah, well, I got it from my mother. Um, oh, okay. So, help me, help me. Trust no one is needing help. In any case, tacos sound yummy, but I'm not going to go there. Meister Brar, hey, Woody, how are you doing, hon? I saw you were feeling a little bit rambunctious earlier today. And looky there, Mr. Admodius is here. Asmodius Asmo. <laughs> hey, Mr. Asmodius. How's things in your world? P. Bunyan is also here. Timber. As well as the lovely Kate down in Florida. And the lovely Rain is right behind Kate. Hey, Rain, how's things going in your world? I also see the RLM Fluke is here, who is the Vanna White of the RLM channel, don't you know? And Rob works. Hey, Rob, and he fired up that bubbler earlier. Cool beans. Vinny! I see you, Vinny. How you doing, hon? I, I, yeah, I said hey to you in front of trusty no one. Trusty number one. Who was going, help me, help me. You'll find it. Oh, it's a fireworks on parade. Woo woo, woo woo. <laughs> that, that's usually a fire hazard. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> mm. Okay. Firefox Quantum. Ah, okay. Let's see. Back to, woo, woo, woo. Oh, shit. Damn it. I was... Dang it, trust no one. You beat me to the duck. Damn it. Oh, well. Hey, trusty. I also see Phantom is here. Thank you once again, Phantom, for that awesome intro. I really do enjoy that. I also see Dakota is in the house, as well as Dima. And there's a Frumpy here. Hi, Frumpy. Aw, cowboy, you're such a sweetheart. Um, JJ's BNC. What is JJ's BNC? Is that the, is that the new JJ's? Oh, hmm. That's, that's almost kind of weird. Um, <laughs> do I really do that? Wow. I didn't realize I talked all redneck when I was talking to Vinny. <laughs> Vinny, you must be contagious, hon. <laughs> oh, you're going to be... Oh, sweet! Vinny's going to be on tonight? How cool. Hmm. With the Ocelli effect? <laughs> Full redneck. Awesome. 
Okay, Kozu is also in the house, as well as Moi, 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 and looky there, Ninsan Dubois, another one of those really fun names to say. Poxified is also here, as well as Pon Popon Sauce, and to round out the crew, the one, the only, the Sock Puppet. Man, there's an awful lot of Sock Puppet stuff out for Christmas, or those those Sock Monkeys, maybe not necessarily Sock Puppet, but Sock Monkeys. There's an awful lot of that stuff out for Christmas already. I have a granddaughter that really likes the sock monkeys. So, um, oh, JJ's on his bouncer. Ah, okay, cool. <laughs> well, Vinny, you know, you just bring the old redneck out of me. <laughs> Somebody's got to be comic relief in this world because, God dang, it's depressing as hell. And, and if I can poke fun at it, it ain't near as bad. So, I mean, it can still be really depressing, but shit, you know, laugh at it a little bit and, and it doesn't feel quite so, quite so. <gasps> Beth Z has joined again. Hello again, lovely Beth Z. Okay. Now you're on 57.0.1. Cool. Awesome, trusty. Okay, I'm going to go to my pocket now because I did throw a few things in there earlier. And uh, one of the things that, I mean, I clicked on it because I thought, wow, cool. A complete idiot's guide to being an idiot. And I thought, wow, that sounds like right up my alley. Until I realized that the headline was not necessarily <laughs> what I had thought it would be. Um, well, you know, it, the headline just below it is, there are many things that could be said about the GOP tax bill. But one thing is certain. It's been a great show. Really? It has? Um, I saw this, and it was like, wow, I really wanted to see, you know, a complete idiot's guide to being an idiot, because I want to know if I'm doing it properly. And no, this is dealing with Congress and Trump Lestilskin and, and McConnell and Ryan and San Fran Nan, the Botox Biatch and, you know, people like that. And really, they're kind of overachievers and I don't really want to go there. But seeing as how I went there just a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and put it over in the Aralumma Numma Numma again. Um, what's that? Redneck Hillbilly Southern Fried Sauce Country. They go. <laughs> you got that right. Oh, now I'm feeling a, hmm, I'm feeling a sneeze. Oh, I hate when that happens. It's cured. It's cool. Wee. Okay. Phew. Oh, wow. Shiver me timbers. I just sneezed. God bless me. Somebody needs to. Okay. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Vinny, only you, honey. You are the you are most definitely a southern fried slice of country. Let me tell you. Um, let's see. So, seeing as how that one just really didn't trip my trigger once I checked on it, I got to go to this one because this is like the ultimate idiot's guide to idiocy, and these people actually get paid to express their opinion. And I thought, wow, wow. Somebody's wasting their money. <laughs> oh, shit. This just in. Israeli warplanes launch airstrike near Damascus. Ah, oh, Israel. Thanks, loads, ass munches. The hell? You aren't... World War Three hasn't started fast enough, or at least the bombing part of it. Aren't you paying attention? Did you guys not get the memo? I sent the memo out you know, a long time ago to let you know World War Three is not going to be a bomber kind of war. It's a war on your mind. And, uh, yeah, you're losing. But wait, if you bomb enough people, maybe you'll shift the balance just a little bit. I don't know. Frickin' ass munches. Oh, well, the reason I went to this link is because <clears throat> it's from RT.com. Pray Prince George is gay. This comes from a clergyman who wants the four-year-old royal to find love of a fine young gentleman. Really? Man. 
Christians should pray for Prince George to be gay. This is according to a leading cur leading clergyman. Mm. The very reverend Kelvin Holdsworth urged the faithful to pray the Lord's blessings, George. Lord blesses George, the son of the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, with the love of a fine young gentleman. Wow. Wow. It's not just little George's love life the Reverend is concerned with, though. In fact, the reason he wants the prince, who is third in line to the throne, to be into men is so the Church of England will be forced to support same-sex marriage. When the boy becomes king, he will also be the leader of the church. Really? How do you know that, that the royals are going to even be around by then I mean lots of shit could happen you know I got a link pertaining to that here in just a little bit anyway in my pocket but really so you want some child to uh, you want to man it's not bad enough they're doing it over here but they want to do it over in the UK too holly apparently this senior angel or Anglican excuse me not angelic Anglican minister and LGBTQ campaigner who is a provost of St. Mary's Cathedral in Glasgow wrote his thoughts in a blog titled What's in Kelvin's Head? Well, obviously, honey, there's an awful lot of fruits and nuts wandering around in there. Hmm. This was after the news of Prince Harry's and Meghan markle's engagement oh so prince harry isn't gonna go that way so next in line is the little feller that's only four years old okay let's mold him as if he's not being molded already Aye. if people don't want to engage in campaigning in this way they um, they do in England have another unique option, which is to pray in the privacy of their hearts, or in public if they dare, for the Lord to bless Prince George with a love, when he grows up, of a fine young gentleman. Really? A royal wedding might sort things out remarkably easily, though we might have to wait 25 years for that to happen. Well, you know what, honey? If that does happen, there's the end of your royal bloodline, just number one. Who knows whether that might be sooner than things might work out by other means. Oh, implying, insinuating, hmm... However, the minister has been criticized for his views. No, no, I'm shocked, I tell you. Apparently, a former chaplain to the Queen, Reverend Gavin Ashenden, called the comments unkind and profoundly unchristian. Well, I would call them unkind and profoundly unchristian because why would you wish upon another what you don't wish for yourself? That, to me, is entirely unchristian. To pray for Prince George to grow up in that way, particularly when part of the expectation is he will inherit, is to produce a biological heir with a woman he loves. And it is to pray in a way that would disable and undermine his constitutional and personal role. Uh, yeah, not to mention, you know, oh, you know, free will. Hmm. It's, it is an unkind and destabilizing prayer, and it is the theological equivalent of a curse of the wicked fairy of one of the fairy tales, which, hey, hey, which really, you know, as far as I'm concerned, some of the pedophile priests we got going on are pretty much wicked fairy godfathers who are cursing people. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. It is an unkind as well as an unconstitutional thing. And it's a very long way from being a blessing for Prince George. I gotta agree. I gotta agree. That That's just totally uncool. Why would you wish upon someone else 
what you would not wish for yourself. That is just, ew, ew. Okay. Da -da, da -da -da -da. <laughs> oh, that's your unauthorized biography, Grim. Ah, did you write that? <laughs> Okay, um, now seeing as how, oh, I better put this over on that effing site. I probably oughta not forget about them. <sighs> okay, this is, well, you know, these, these godly people, it's like all these people that, you know, God will smite you. It's like, really? So you're you're praying for people to be smote. So apparently you're praying for yourself to be smote as well. Hmm. Yeah, cuz that's that's always kind of the way I looked at it. If you're praying for something for someone else, you're praying for that to visit upon you as well, is it not? Uh -huh. Idiot. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. I better have a sip. I sound much better than I did yesterday, I gotta tell ya. Okay. So, back to... Where was I? Where was I? Where, oh, where are we eating that? What? What? Oh, hey! Weed smokers and pud whacking porn addicts are what? Okay, there's a group over on Fakie Book that apparently... on. Uh, winners bring solutions, losers bring excuses. Okay, yeah. Um. What? Okay, somebody. Christine Fontenot, who is an admin in this group, Posted, attention group, if you see any pro-weed slash pro-stupid comments, any pro-porn, pud, whackin', pervert, pedophile comments, or any anti-Trump, libtard, victim, crybaby comments, please tag me or Gavin Robert McGowan so we can kick the loser to the curb or just report to admin. We got lots more trash to take out. Let's make it a great day. Well, honey... I'm just going to have to say, see you, love you, bye. Huh. There. Now, I will just say, nope, done, out of here. Leave. Huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I I don't even remember being in that group, but apparently somebody decided that I needed to be in that group. But, well, I just let them know that, mm, not that I really want to see anything from Pudwhackers or any of that other fun shit, but weed supporting. I don't have a problem with weed supporting. If you want to be a douchebag and tell people they're not allowed to talk about weed, well, fine. I don't have to hang out with you. Okay, this is probably... Not the year to hang that mistletoe up around the office. <laughs> That's from Gary L. Yeah, Gary, probably not. Probably not. There's probably going to be quite a few. Oh, oh, you know. <sighs> See, uh, wow, that was loud. Hello, dang a -ling. Um. We have this wonderful thing at work where we have our company Christmas party and we give away you know, white elephant prizes, basically. And a couple years ago, somebody gave away a belt that had mistletoe attached to the buckle. <laughs> I'm thinking that would not be an appropriate thing for the gift exchange this year. What do you think? Probably not. Mm. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Salesforce. Why human AI partnerships are the future of work. No, I don't know. Okay. 
Um, I think I'm going to go this one next because, you know, we're talking about all this craziness and, and well, the world has just gone freaking crazy. This is from Neon Nettle. And, um, okay, it was posted today on Neon Nettle, but I'm not real sure. Are, do we have a super moon on Sunday? Seriously? Or is this just kind of a, because part of it said that, okay, the, it says August the 12th of 2014 in my pocket version, but when I go to the actual link, it says posted today. So, but in any case. <coughs> Excuse me. Apparently, a NASA insider says that Sunday's supermoon, wait for it, will trigger catastrophic tsunamis. So prepare now. Now, it wasn't enough that a few years ago they gave us the giant meteor and, you know, all of our hopes and dreams were dashed asunder because that didn't come through. They lied to us. We thought, yep giant meteor here it comes it's going to wipe the slate clean we're all going to go off to that happily ever after but no they just dangled that carrot in front of us and then went nope ain't going to happen then a couple years ago well my idea so i happen to like it i have the giant etch a sketch you know and i thought let's shake this bad boy up and we'll have a giant etch a sketch and we'll just Wipe the slate clean and start all over again. Well, that didn't happen either. Partly because I didn't build the Etch-A-Sketch. Partly because nobody else wanted to play along. But now, now NASA is saying that we got a super moon that's going to cause tsunamis. Are you ready? Can you, do you have your personal flotation devices handy? You better if you live anywhere near a coastline. Apparently, this Sunday supermoon is expected to dramatically increase its gravitational pull on the Earth, triggering extinction-level earthquakes and tsunamis. This is according to a NASA insider. Be afraid! Fairborn! The insider at the space agency explained how the gravitational pull from the supermoon will be so strong... How strong will it be? It will be so strong that it will cause fault lines to trigger and a catastrophic extinction level earthquake. Maybe even Yellowstone. Maybe. The NASA employee who has requested to remain anonymous because, well, you know, if you know who they are, then you can hold them accountable for their bullshit. But they said... We've been seeing a huge epidemic of earthquakes and volcanoes erupting in 2017. But let me tell you, this supermoon will trigger the biggest we've seen in thousands of years. All I'm saying is be prepared. Make sure you're stocked up on your food and water. Get away from the coast. Run away, run away. Oh, wait. <laughs> I'm, I'm not supposed to sound like a redneck hillbilly on that, am I? I'm supposed to sound very intellectual. <laughs> yeah. Apparently this supermoon happens when the full moon is in its closest approach to the Earth, making it seem a lot brighter and larger than normal. We do have supermoons that are new moons as well, but you really can't tell because you can't see it because it's dark. Hmm. Apparently, major researchers have now gathered concrete evidence that links major earthquakes to supermoon events. Dun -dun 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 -dun. And according to the Express, in a video about the link between supermoons and earthquakes released last year, the Bright Insight Channel said, we are finally just seeing that scientists are acknowledging that there is a positive correlation between supermoons and the effect that it has on Earth's tides and tectonic plates. You know, Lug told me that years ago. He used to work in the gold mine up in uh, South Dakota. And he said you could always tell when a full moon was going over, you would hear all these pops and creaks and weird ass. 
He said it was the freakiest damn thing you'd hear. So I knew that shit a long time ago. And a super moon, it's like coming in with its cape and going, Here I come to wipe the slate. Yeah, or maybe not. <clears throat> so when we look at the last four supermoons, which include the massive Indonesian 9.2 earthquake and tsunami that occurred in 2004, and then swell as the major 8.0 earthquake in Chile in 2008, and the Chile 8.8 .8 earthquake in 2010, and the last supermoon was a massive 9.0 earthquake and tsunami on March 11th of 2011. That wasn't the last supermoon. Obviously, this was printed. This was August of uh, 2014. <coughs> Excuse me, because there have been other supermoons since then. So while it is known that the moon causes tides in the oceans, science is divided on the impact it can have on seismic activity on Earth. A study by Japanese researchers claims that there could be a link between the moon, seismic activity, and tidal events. Could be, might be, almost, kind of, sort of, maybe. Let's be a little bit more ambiguous about it, shall we? It reads that the possibility possibility of tidal triggering of earthquakes has been investigated since the 19th century and numerous studies have examined this topic. Statistically significant correlations between seismicity and tidal stresses have been discovered using large data sets but the correlations are generally limited to spe special regions or circumstances. So, <coughs> excuse me. If this domino happens to fall into this domino, which happens to fall into this domino, which falls into this domino, but wait, there's more, and that one falls into this domino, then maybe might almost kind of sort of possibly have something really bad happen. And if it doesn't happen, I'll just say, well, the dominoes didn't fall right. Because they always give themselves an out. They always do. The study concluded that when the sun, the earth, and the moon are in a straight line with each other, at new or full moon, tidal stresses upon the earth are maximized. Well, duh. If it happens during a supermoon, the effects are even stronger with tidal forces from the moon as much as 50% greater. Wow, if they're that much greater, then I should weigh less during a supermoon, right? <laughs> it's a happy thought. <laughs> However, most scientists say it is still not enough to pose, <coughs> excuse me, a major risk. Okay, thank you. I feel much better now. I'm not nearly so scared. He did say that the effects on the Earth from a supermoon are minor. And according to the most detailed studies by terrestrial seismologists and volcanologists, the combination of the moon being at its closest to Earth in its orbit and being in its full moon configuration relative to the Earth and Sun should not affect the internal energy balance of the Earth since there are lunar tides every day. Okay. See? Hmm. Now I'm wondering, okay, so if it's a full moon, does that mean that it's its opposite side from the sun, or does that mean it? No, it has to, because the sun's light is shining. So then we're being pulled at by the sun and the moon. And since the sun is bigger, it's got big. Yay. Apparently, the Earth has stored a tremendous amount of internal energy within its thin outer shell or crust. And the small differences in the tidal forces exerted by the moon and sun are not enough to fundamentally overcome the much larger forces within the planet due to convection and other aspects of the internal energy balance that drives plate tectonics. So in other words, be afraid, be afraid, be afraid, but we really don't have any science to back up our be afraid, but you should be afraid anyway, because fear porn. That's pretty much what I got out of that. 
Oh, they ain't no oceans in Kentucky. See, so you're doing good. There's no oceans out here in the middle of the boonies either, Chloe. So we're we're both good. And and if something really freaky deaky does happen, well, then possibly the western slope of Colorado will be beachfront property. Sorry, all of you people out there in Mexifornia. And Vinny, honey, do you have your personal flotation device? I'm just making sure, hun, because, yeah, when that tsunami hits, Vegas is going to go glub, glub, glub. Be careful, hun. <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. But, you know, I don't get paid to think, so there you go. <laughs> okay. I'm going to put this over here on this effing side as well. Just because... And do I have a, oh, I know which one I'm going to do. I know. Let's see. I got to find just the perfect little Mimi guy over here. Or emoticon guy, not Mimi guy. Where is he? I got to keep scrolling until I find him. Oh, that's the, there we go. There's a full moon for you. <laughs> Whoo. There is always going to be someone out there that's going to tell you, be afraid, be afraid. <coughs> Simply because fear sells. Just like sex. Sex is more fun, more people are interested in it, but fear does sell. So does bad news. And war. And all that other fun shit. So. Yes... Oh, thank you, Cowboy Tech, for voting that up. I appreciate that, hun. Over there on mines. Okay, back to my pocket I go. Let's see. I'm just going to read you some of the headlines because it's like, nah. nah. Um, Mel Gibson says that Hollywood elites kill innocent children and drink their blood. A little bit late now, Mel. And the reason, I read the article earlier today, and he said that the reason that he didn't come forward sooner is because uh, not only did they threaten his career, but they also threatened his life and the life of his family and all that other fun stuff. And I'm thinking, okay, what about the lives of these children? So, mm. No, that don't wash with me, hon. If you truly wanted to do the right thing, you number one get your, you made enough money, you can get your family to safety, and then you come out, and you don't come out like a crazy brains. I mean, nah, nah. Oh well, um. Let's see, what other headlines do I have? Uh, oh, Japanese model Rinka wants women to know that there's no shame in aging. Well, thank you, sweetheart. She's in her 40s, and she is quite lovely. Um, and yeah, there is no shame in aging, because, you know, n it's not for the faint of heart. And actually, those people that insist on having someone without wrinkles, it's like, really? How shallow can you be? I earned every one of these smile lines, I'll have you know. Um, here, let's go with this one. This one looks kind of fun. This is um, actually from yesterday. It's from king5.com. And uh, there is a video here, and it does an auto start, and I so I was prepared for it. Um... Anti-vaccination messages startle shoppers at a kid's store. Really? You're startled by this? I've seen an awful lot of kickback. Anti-vax must really be getting some, you know, m getting some footing going. Because, man, are the trolls coming out. They are, you know you're over the target when you start getting flack. Just saying. Because, man, they're coming out in full force. Some shoppers were surprised to find anti-vaccination messages hidden in items they bought at Babies R Us 
in Linwood recently. The store says that it's trying to find out who is putting the notes into product boxes during the busy holiday shopping season. I was shocked, shocked I tell you, and was really concerned that people who don't know enough about science might actually take it seriously, said Hil Hilary Winchid, or excuse me, Windish, who is a mother of two. Hilary, honey, I'm really happy that your children have not been adversely affected. She was visiting the Linwood Babies R Us last weekend and bought a few ornament making kits for her children. When she got home and opened up the box, she found a very unwanted accessory, a card questioning the safety of vaccines. It directs people to a website and vaccine info hotline. What is so disturbing about that? It's called educating yourself, making an informed decision. They're targeting a really vulnerable population of people, said Windish, a scientist with a PhD who has helped develop vaccines. Ah, 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 no, she doesn't have any kind of conflict of interest in this at all, does she? No. King 5 is not uh, revealing the anti-vaccination group's website or phone number out of concern for the spreading mi misinformation. Um, I think that Big Pharma has also done an awful lot of spreading of misinformation. And, you know, if something is such a wonderful idea, why are you mandating it? Why is it not a choice? Why can't people just make that choice, make an educated choice? Why don't you think people can make informed decisions? Why do you feel as though you have to tell them? You cannot have your child, you cannot leave the hospital with, it, with your child unless your child becomes a pincushion. Hmm? Why is that? I mean, if, if what you, the, you're selling, what you're pushing, you pushers, is such a wonderful thing then why are you forcing people extorting them withholding their child hmm the american academy of pediatrics says vaccines save lives and are the most significant medical innovation of our time they may possibly have been but it's the shit that they put in there now you know, like the Marisol. There's a lot of unsafe stuff in there. And they really have not proved that vaccines, besides the fact that, okay, if your child is vaccinated, then why are you so concerned about someone that is not vaccinated? Because if that person that's not vaccinated does contract this illness and they wind up building an immune system themselves against that illness, why are you concerned for your child? Because your child's already been vaccinated and therefore should not contract this illness. That's what they say. Do you not believe the shit you spew? Apparently this organization says, claims that Im immunizations are unsafe or cause autism have been proven or disproven by a robust body of medical literature. Yes. And we all know about the ethical uh, publishing of papers that are contrary to what the medical establishment wishes to put forth. We all know how, how good that is, don't we? If we don't, do some research. Because me just sitting here spouting about it ain't going to change your mind. Do your own research. But... <clears throat> Apparently, a spokesperson for Babies R Us says its Linwood team removed several of the cards from their store over the past few weeks. Why are you concerned about these cards? Why are you concerned that people might be going out there and informing themselves? Maybe they will go to this website and they will decide that it's bunk all by themselves. Why not let them find out for themselves? Hmm? 
It is frustrating that an individual is using our store to distribute these materials, and we will be working to identify anyone involved, the company said in a statement. Well, good for you. Good for you. I hope you're happy with the side that you have chosen. I hope things work out well. Talk to your pediatrician about what what's appropriate for your kids. Don't listen to these websites, said Windish. Yeah, talk to your pediatrician who listens to the sales rep from Big Pharma and who doesn't read the uh, vaccination inserts that tell you each and every ingredient in there. They just go by what the um, sales rep for Big Pharma tells them. Why? Because they're busy being pediatricians and and they they believe that they're being told the truth just like you do and they actually have lives you know they have families and they have lives and then when they find out just exactly how much they've been lied to they tend to get a little bit pissy and they step forward and then they get browbeat and they get their name dragged through the mud oh but that's that's no, those people are just wax. They're crazies. They're crazies, I tell ya. Yeah. What is wrong with putting a little bit of information out there? It's just like putting flyers out there. Before you turn your child into a pin cushion, how about you check out this? That's That's what I would do. Um, ooh, moon shadows are going to be awesome. That's true. Moon shadow. Hey, Cat Stevens. Moon shadow, moon shadow. Okay. Paul Ryan is, or Ryan Payne. Yeah. Read that right. Graham's Kia. I know Major Payne. Oh, that was a movie. Never mind. Never mind. That's cool, Vinny. Ryan Payne is now out. Yay! Yay, yay, yay. Okay. I'm going to put this over in the effing site as well real quick. Just because... You know, I would much rather err on the side of giving people more options for information than to withhold, because you never know what someone may deem appropriate for their perspective or whatever. Some uh, There's lots of things that I could really give two shits less about. But there are times when I click on something and I go, oh... Well, you know, this really doesn't fascinate me, but wow, I'm really glad I learned that because now I know something else to add to my little book of knowledge that hides inside my brain. Okay. And so, yes. <gasps> Hi, loop de loo That's my little sissy poo. Aw, Miss Pua. Wah! Hey, Miss Pua. My sister's doggy is a celebrity. She's a spokes poochie. How cool. She's St. Bernard, by the way. Big girl. A big lovey girl. Okay. Let's see. Do I see anything else? Nope. I don't see anything else on there. So. <clears throat> dun, 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 dun. Okay. I'm going to go to this one just because I saw it earlier and I'm... Mm, U.S. hits the hypocrisy ball out of the park. And it is from informationclearinghouse.info. Now, I saw it earlier in the RLM chat, and I clicked on it, and I went, hmm, interesting. 
and then I shoved it in my pocket because, yeah, phone rang and I didn't have a chance to even peruse past the headline. So, it is from yesterday. State Department condemns designation of media as foreign agents. It applies only to Russia. Oh, and this is by Moon of Alabama. All righty, Moon of Alabama. Thank you ever so much. November 30th, 2017, Information Clearinghouse. It remarked that legislation that allows to label media outlets as foreign agents presents yet another threat to free media. It noted that freedom of expression, including speech and media, is a universal human rights obligation. The remark came after the U.S. Department of Justice required the Russian outlet RT America to register as a foreign agent under the Foreign Agent Registration Act. RT registered as ordered on November the 13th. Ah, I would have given them the big single finger salute. But the State Department statement was not in response to the DOJ requirement against RT. The State Department reacted to a new Russian law that was issued in response to the demand against RT. The new Russian law is a mirror to the U.S. FARA law. It demands that foreign media, which are active in Russia, register as foreign agents. The EU poodles followed the State Department nonsense with an equally dumb statement. With its criticism of the Russian version of the FARA law, while ignoring the U.S. FARA action against RT, the State Department confirmed the allegations of hypocrisy. RT and other media have raised against the U.S. government. The whole issue started with the notable liar James Clapper under the Obama administration. He and other quote-unquote intelligence people found that RT was too truthful in its reporting to be allowed to inform the U.S. public. Publication of criticism of the U.S. government based on verifiable facts is seen as unfriendly acts which must be punished. Congress and the U.S. Justice Department under the Trump administration followed up on that. FARA is originally not directed against foreign media. The trump stilskin Justice Department circumvented the spirit of the law to apply it to RT. Man, overachievers just goes to show those of you that had your faith in old trump stilskin the head Oompa Loompa, yeah, how you liking that? How's that working out for you so far? The Russian government has warned several times that the application of FARA against RT would be followed up um, with a similar requirement against U.S. media in Russia. Tit for tat, wouldn't you say? And the Trumples administration ignored those warnings. Hmm. It now condemns the Russian move because, well, we did it first and therefore that means that we're okay, but you're just doing it in retaliation, so that means you're just being petty and childish. So there. Mm. Yeah. So, Timeline of events. Clapper calls for U.S. information agency on steroids to counter Russian propaganda. The Washington Times, January 5th of 2017. We could, uh, or we could do with having a USIA on steroids to fight this information war with Russia a lot more aggressively than we're doing right now. This was from the Director of National Intelligence, James Clapper. He told this to members of the Senate Armed Services Committee. Russia today was very active in promoting a particular point of view, disparaging our system, our alleged hypocrisy about human rights, he said. Whatever crack, fissure they could find in our tapestry, they would exploit it via the state-owned news network. In other words, if you guys had a loose thread, they would pull it and your tapestry would just go 
and you'd have a big old gaping hole for people to peek through and see just exactly what you're doing behind that curtain. The intelligence report on Russian hacking from the Office of the Director of National Intelligence, January 6, 2017, Annex I, originally published on the 11th of December 2012 by the Open Source Center, RT America TV, a Kremlin-financed channel operated from within the United States, has substantially expanded its repertoire of programming that highlights criticism of alleged U.S. shortcomings in democracy and civil liberties. Well, somebody's got to do it, because obviously the corporate lame-ass propaganda system is in your front pocket, not your back pocket, because we already know what kind of little deals they are performing under the desk. Yeah. RT aired a document about the Occupy Wall Street movement on the 1st, 2nd, and 4th of November. RT framed the movement as a fight against the ruling class and described the current U.S. political system as corrupt and dominated by corporations. Huh, go figure. They, uh, wow, actually called it as they saw it, which is kind of sort of what it's supposed to do, right? No, apparently not. RT's reports often characterize the United States as a surveillance state, <laughs> shock, and alleged widespread infringements of civil liberties, police brutality, and drone use. Well, so far, I'm, fi I'm finding it hard to see anything wrong with any of what RT has done. Granted, they're probably propaganda, well, they're, there's no probably about it, they're propaganda as well, but still, they're pointing out your ugly underside. They're connecting the dots between the boils on your butt. That's what they're doing. RT has also focused on criticism of the U.S. economic system, U.S. currency policy, alleged Wall Street greed, and the U.S. national debt. Wow! You guys got a lot of boils on your backside, and they're starting to make a really big web out of that. You know, connecting all them dots. It's a pretty ugly picture. It's starting to look like San Fran Nan. It's no wonder her husband doesn't want to have sex with her anymore. He got them cataracts removed. Don't you know? RT is a leading media voice opposing Western intervention in Syrian conflict and blaming the West for waging information wars against the Syrian government. Huh. Hmm. Well, basically, calling a spade a spade. No, I'm not being racist. I'm talking about the playing card. U.S. Congressman David N. Cicilline, who is a Democrat from Rhode Island and who serves as co-chair of the Democratic Policy and Communications Committee, and U.S. Congressman Matthew Gatz, a Republican of Florida, today introduced legislation to close a loophole in foreign agent registration requirements that Russia today exploited. Extensive, oh, they exploited it extensively during last year's presidential selection. That happened on June the 7th of 2017. Then on September the 13th of 2017, RT said that late Monday... Um, that the company that supplies all the services for its RT America channel was told by the DOJ in a letter that it is obligated to register under the Foreign Agents Registration Act, an act aimed at lobbyists and lawyers representing foreign political interests. Hmm. FARA specifically exempts U.S. and foreign news organizations and the DOJ focus on the company that supplies services for RT might be a, a way around that stipulation. Well, they always have little loopholes built into their, you know, so they can have exceptions. Oh, it applies to you, but not to us. Because, well, in the NADA, we made it okay for us to propagandize our own people because... It's for their own good, don't you? Well, it's for our own good, but we're telling them it's for their own good. Then, 
Russia decides to amend a law to classify U.S. media as foreign agents. This is November 10th of 2017. Reuters <clears throat> in Moscow said Russia's parliament warned on Friday some U.S. and other foreign media could be declared foreign agents and obliged to regularly declare full details of their funding, finances, and staffing. Huh. How's it feel getting a little bit of yum back? Russian lawmakers said that the move was retaliation for a demand by the U.S. Department of Justice that Kremlin-backed TV, or TV station RT register in the United States as a foreign agent, something Moscow has said it regards as an unfriendly act, which I would. Then on November 13th, um, the Kremlin-backed television station, RT America, registered Monday with the U.S. Department of Justice as a foreign agent in the United States. The outlet's editor-in-chief said, and um, the Department of Justice confirmed that later in the day. Then, Russia's Justice Ministry has warned several U.S. government-funded news outlets that they could be designated as foreign agents under a new bill that has yet to be fully approved. This is November the 16th of this year. The bill, endorsed by Russia's lower house on Wednesday, comes in response to U.S. demands that Russian state-funded RT-TV register as a foreign agent. It needs to be approved by the upper house and signed by President Vladimir Putin to become law. Hmm, I'm thinking this is an awful lot of tit for tat, tit for tat. Uh, who's got their their deck chairs and their popcorn? I'm going to get my adult beverages out too. I want to watch this unfold. But wait, there's more. Russian President Vladimir Putin signed into law Saturday. Now this is dated November the 25th of this year. He signed into law on Saturday a new bill designated or designating international media outlets as foreign agents in retaliation for a similar measure taken by the U.S. Department of Justice against the state-funded RT television. Neener, neener, neener. Then, yes, there is more. November the 26th, in Brussels, the European Union has criticized legislation signed by President Vladimir Putin that empowers Russia's government to designate media outlets receiving funding from abroad as foreign agents. Why not? Y'all have the same kind of shit on your books. Why can't they do it too? Oh, wait. They're using it against you. Ah, oh, sucks, doesn't it? And they're going to impose sanctions. Ooh! Apparently, a spokesperson for the European Commission of Neighborhood Policy and Enlargement Negotiations, wow, that's a mouthful, said in a November 26 statement that the legislation goes against Russia's human rights obligations and commitments. Really? What about their own human rights and commitments? Hmm? It's, it never hurts you. I think everybody in D.C., should wear little patches, you know, on their uniforms, their suits, their whatever, that, you know, shows who their sponsors are, who's paying their way. It'd be like NASCAR suits. We'd be surprised how many of our supposed representatives represent their highest paying donors. Yeah. But wait, there's more on the 28th of November. New Russian legislation that allows the Ministry of Justice to label media outlets as foreign agents and to monitor or block certain internet activity presents yet another threat to free media in Russia. Oh, sure, it presents another threat, but since when have we had free media over here in the U.S.? Y'all are just... Ugh. 
Apparently, freedom of expression, including speech and media, which a government may find inconvenient, is a universal human rights obligation, and Russia has pledged to uphold it. Well, so have y'all, and yet y'all ain't doing it. <sighs> The new Russia legislation that allows the Ministry of Justice to label media outlets as foreign agents. So what? So it labels them. If the label fits, wear it. If it don't fit, walk on by. Just let it fall off. With a few less words, the statement by the State Department would have gained universality. It would have made perfect sense. But... For a corrected version, and they have a little link here, which it's too small for me to read without my glasses, and I'm not going to put my glasses on for that. So, unfortunately, the State Department spokesperson added some verbose lamenting about a specific country. It thereby exposed itself to the very criticism the U.S. government strives to suppress. And an update from November 30th. As consequence of the FARA designation of RT's U.S. production company, RT is now losing access to the Congressional Gallery. Congress Gallery access is a, in turn required to get White House press credentials. Ah, so RT is now likely to lose those too. Well, we are really kicking it into high gear, aren't we? Meanwhile, a consultative or consultative Congress commission, yeah, say that three times fast, is pressing to designate the Chinese news agency, Xinhua, as foreign agent. It also wants all staff to register as such. Ah, yeah, see, they're circling the wagons. They don't want you guys seeing what they're doing because you do have a dog in this race. And they don't want, they're crippling you, they're hobbling you. That would make it nearly impossible for freelancer and others who work for multiple media to continue with their Xinhua gigs. Hmm. Well, this is just getting more and more interesting as it goes along. Huh. I know, Grimmy, those damn Ruskies, they're just communist pinkos. And the Chinese, you know, they're both commies. Both commies. Hemi Reuters, I like that. <laughs> okay, Reuters is a spewage service, okay? Um. Oh, <laughs> I got a zoing waff for you. Oh, wow. That sounds, that sounds almost kinky, Grim. Damn. Okay, so, see how interesting when, when the big boys play, they really don't play any different from us. I mean, well, okay, they don't play any different from, you know, little ones on a playground, you know, like preschool. Oh. You knocked my toy over, I'm going to knock your toy over. You're telling on me? Okay, I'm going to tell on you. Yeah, that's pretty much the way it works. Pretty much. Y'all are just really mature here. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> and just because they did it first does not justify you doing it back. Although I do find it extremely amusing, i got to say. Huh. <sighs> It's like, wow, y'all are just really entertaining, and yet not. Oy. Okay. Where do I want, wow, damn. This day, or this show has just really flown by. I did not realize it had gotten this far. 
I'm going to put this over here on mines too, just because, just because. Little tit for tat. Or maybe tag your it. Hey, there you go. Okay, I'm going to go check out the pig because I haven't been to the pig. I've, I'm kind of almost having pig withdrawal. Isn't that scary? I think it is. We the people. Pull my finger. No hambo or porcus. Neither one. I know you guys. I am not going to pull your finger. Noxious aromas come out. Okay. The word of the day over here on piggazette.com is Frisco. It's a liberal enclave where American citizens are fair game as long as the murderer is a border jumping scumbag. Now, I saw the um, uh, jury verdict come in that he was innocent on all counts. And I'm thinking, really? On all counts? Not even involuntary manslaughter? I mean, he admitted to pulling the trigger. So, uh, hmm. Of course, I was not there. I did not have the evidence. All it, but I'm thinking questionable, very questionable, and it just makes me really, really concerned about the gene pool that that jury pool was drawn from. Okay, in their quotable quotes section, if God doesn't destroy Hollywood Boulevard in Frisco, um. He owes Sodom and Gomorrah an apology. Yeah. <coughs> I can, yeah. I can understand that. Uh, now, did was it Matt Lauer that got fired? How many people are going to get fired? And I want to know. I just, I really want to know. Um, these quote-unquote sexual misconduct things, sexual assault, sexual harassment, whatever. Were they actually or did someone say, wow, that dress looks really good on you? Or, hey, you're looking mighty fine today. You know, if it was just paying a compliment or, or if it was someone just, you know, saying, ah, okay, whatever, S paying compliments to everyone else except for, which would make that person wish to say, wait a minute here. You know, I'm being discriminated against because I'm not good looking or anything like that. You know, the people are weird. They really are kind of weird. Uh, but I want to know what the hell, what the hell denotes uh, sexual assault or sexual harassment in these cases. Because that line seems extremely vague. And it, it, it moves a lot. And can women be accused of that? I, Beth shared a video earlier today on the RLM of some gal that's apparently running for um, attorney general or some such bullshit in Mex uh, Michigan. I think it was Michigan. And she was saying... You you can know, or something along the lines of, you'll know I won't be showing my penis. And it's like, really? Thanks. I mean, you're supposed to be like the head law enforcer of the state. So, you know, that's pretty much a given. Unfortunately, that's now something that people go, this is a reason why you should vote for me. Because even though it really should be considered a given, well, it's not anymore. So now I have to campaign using that I don't have a penis and therefore you can be assured that I'm not going to be showing you mine. What? Lord. The handbasket. Do you see it? That's what this global warming is. We're going to hell and we're all in a great big hand basket. Mm. Okay. So this date in history, the 1st of December, 1929, a long time ago, after Edwin S. Lowe invents his new game, little old ladies in sensible shoes from sea to shining sea change mantra from get off my lawn to 
Bingo! Okay, I gotta admit, I do like playing bingo. I do. I don't go play bingo, but you know when we have family get-togethers, we do that. And we win way cool prizes. You know, like like Nerf guns, or squirt guns, or d jacks. Y'all played, have any of you ever played jacks? Oh, I'm sure there's quite a few of that that have played jacks. I'm sure there's some of you that have children that have stepped on jacks in the middle of the night. <laughs> I know I have. Huh. Bingo! It's a fun game. Okay, and lastly, the 1st of December, 1987, Brits and Surrender Monkeys start digging a hole under the English Channel. Ooh, that's uh, the Brits and the French, for those of you that don't speak Hamboese. Apparently, they're being slackers today. Only had two things this date in history. I'm going to have to talk to Hambo's uh, lovely bride because she comes up with more of that on fakey book than he does. Shame, 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 shame. Let's see, what's going on on the Prattler? I haven't gone to check out the Prattler for a while. Wow, it's been a while since it's been updated. Hmm. You guys are slacking. Shamey, shamey. Oh, well. They do have lots of really cool stuff over here on the pig. And he's got a hell of a rant going over here for their top story. So you might want to come over to PIGazette.com and check out their top story and see some of the other links that they've got on the side. And uh, say hey to Hambo on Porcus. And by the way, the uh, graphics that you see, you know, the artwork and stuff all over the place. Yeah, you can thank Porcus for that. He's a pretty artistic feller. Okay, let's see. Where, where are you tonight? Where else do I want to go? I think I'll see what Pocket is recommending for me. What? Why all the comedy men are so often awful? Hmm. No, I don't want to rethink sex. I kind of like sex. <laughs> the way it's supposed to be. Um... Oh, hey, hey, here you go. Here's a cool one. Seeing as how I'm drinking uh, ginger and uh, turmeric tea. This is from goslimyourbody.us. Uh, research study, ginger can, can destroy prostate cancer, ovarian and colon cancer better than chemotherapy. Ha, huh. shock, shock. That's because chemo doesn't really, it just puts it into remission. It's my, that's my personal opinion. Okay, so numerous people around the world have known and used the incredible health properties of ginger. Ginger has also been considered to be a natural remedy for numerous various illnesses. And modern science has confirmed this capacity of ginger and studies suggest that it has an immense power in the treatment of cancer. According to the Journal of Toxicology and Food Chemistry, ginger contains two substances known as paradols and gingerols. Hey, at ginger. <laughs> okay. Which help to prevent cancer. Yet scientists have shown... Um, okay. Yet scientists have shown... That than conv uh, somebody really needs to proofread this shit. I just mentally stumbled and it hurt. Okay, scientists have shown that conventional cancer treat that is better than conventional cancer treatments such as chemotherapy. Maybe they needed to put better. That is better than ginger destroys colorectal cancer. At a conference for cancer prevention and research in 2003, scientists showed that ginger efficiently uh, prevents colorectal cancer, yet there are numerous studies which have confirmed the same. Despite preventing colon cancer, ginger also destroys colon cancer cells. This is from the Journal of Nutrition, published a study in 2015. 
This amazing root can be of great help to people who suffer from colorectal cancer, as well as those who would use it as a cancer prevention. See, that would have been awesome for my former father-in-law, because he passed away 20 years ago now. I don't know, more than that, 25 years ago, from colon cancer. And he loved ginger. He liked the dried ginger. Ugh. But, yeah, that was after the radiation pretty much destroyed. Radiation and chemotherapy pretty much destroyed any kind of immune system he had. Because that's what it does. Ginger also treats ovarian cancer. Um, and da, 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 da. and it may, if you manage to prevent the infection of the ovaries, you may successfully prevent the cancer development. See? The ginger root has an active ingredient with powerful an anti-angiogenic properties, which can efficiently prevent the development of cancer. This is according to the BMC, Complementary and Alternative Medicine. Ginger effectively destroys cancer cells and is even a better alternative than chemotherapy as the cancer cells in the ovaries do not develop resistance to it. That is from the University of Michigan. Ginger therapy uh, causes fewer side effects, duh, does not cause drug resistance, and leads to less toxicity than the conventional treatments. No shit, Sherlock. Ginger kills prostate cancer cells as well. The extract from, of ginger successfully prevents the growth of prostate cancer cells. This was published in the British Journal of Nutrition, and researchers suggested a dose of 100 milligrams of ginger per kilo of body weight. Uh, the findings of the study suggest that the ginger extract reduces the tumor growth by 56%. Ginger does not af affect the development of healthy cells in the body, which is not the case with conventional cancer treatments. The conclusion was that it was the first report that offered a detailed explanation of the anti-carcinogenic activity in vitro and in vivo, of the ginger extract in the therapeutic management of prostate cancer in humans. Research also confirmed that uh, it is more effective than chemotherapy. Duh! Chemotherapy. Okay, stop and realize this, people. They say that um, chemotherapy is like 95 or, you know, 70-some percent um, for, you know, Help extending people's lives up to five years. But what they don't tell you is after that five-year threshold, they have a 95% loss rate. So only 5% survive instead of 70. So basically, they just prolonged your suffering because, you know, when it comes back, then you have to go through the whole bullshit again. Or they would like you to because, well, obviously, they haven't milked you dry enough yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mul multiple studies have provided evidence that ginger efficiently prevents numerous cancer types and destroys the cancer cells in prostate, colon, and ovaries. The best thing about it, um, about it all is that it does not cause detrimental side effects as it destroys only the affected cells and has no effects on the healthy ones, at least not detrimental ones. This means that this natural cancer treatment only improves health and does not poison the body. Wah! Hence, as soon as possible, you should start using ginger as a medicine. So make sure you incorporate it into your daily diet, diet and use it regularly. In this way, you will treat the existing disease, prevent cancer, and enjoy numerous health benefits as well. The recommended daily amount of ginger is 4 grams, and uh, while pregnant women should not take more than 1 milligram daily, 
Make sure that you consume a healthy diet, lead a healthy lifestyle, and exercise regularly in order to promote your well-being and prevent cancer and other health problems. Also, filter your water. But yes, you need exercise and diet. It all plays together. Oh, cool. Ginger alls. <laughs> what are you guys talking about over here? Okay. Who is this tat guy and why is he? <laughs> Grimmy, maybe if you got a tat. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Uh, ginger rolls. Ginger rolls. Wow, that's almost like under rolls. Or not. Um, okay. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Keep that cursor rolling. Um... <laughs> oh well cool frumpy that does sound good frumpy said that how the alcoholic brain works grams mentions ginger and somehow i think of mint and now i'm burping a mojito <laughs> or you're burning <laughs> see and how the brain works i read burping instead of burning <laughs> Oh, you want a small picture of mojito. Okay. You just go for it, hon. <laughs> I'm going to go and fix myself another glass of tea here in just a little bit. Because I'm just about, I've, I've just about consumed all of this one. I guess that's a good thing I'm just about done, huh? Okay. Let's see. JJ's is over here in, in, um. The corner pocket. Hi, JJ's. I see you. Okay, I'm going to go back to my pocket because I do have just a couple minutes more and I wish to see um, what else I can find. Nano machines that drill into cancer cells, killing them in just 60 seconds. Developed by scientists. Cool. Oh, well, here you go. I'm just going to kind of, wow. Okay, I'm going to read these to you, and then I'll probably just share the links, but I'm not going to because, wow. Um, sex education needs to be more graphic because teens are trying taboo practices, say experts. Really? What is considered taboo? I mean, if, if the experts are saying they're taboo practices, I want to know just exactly what that is. Because so far, some of the things that the experts are sec suggesting that uh, children be taught, uh, I see them and I go, dude, really? You couldn't pay me enough to do that shit. <laughs> Whoa. And then uh, how a lack of touch is destroying men. Uh, well, sorry, honey. Do you need to be touched? Are you a little touched in the head? Of course, this is from the telegraph.co.uk. So mm, go figure. And people over in the UK are kind of weird. <laughs> yes, I'm talking to you guys over there in the UK, too. I've been over there. Y'all got a very strange sense of humor. Um, let me go back to, I got to see this one on, I want to see why the lack of touch is messing with you. This is from upliftconnection.com. Oh, they need more platonic touch in their life. Oh, so they need women to come up and just put their hand on their shoulder. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, platonic touch. That means no grabbing the crotch, no grabbing the ass, no... Yeah. Hmm. 
It's amazing the things that get put in my recommended thing in my pocket. It's like pocket thinks I'm a little on the pervy side. <laughs> Go figure. Oh, well. Huh. You know what? I am just about out of time. So, uh, what's that? Hmm. Huh. Weaker immune system among the surprising ways sexual abstinence affects the body. Oh, dude, seriously? Wow. So if you're not, no wonder. See, having a healthy sex life is very healthy for you. <laughs> oh, how about this one? Facebook, you needy son of a bitch. My Facebook has gone absolutely nuts lately. Anybody else that's on Facebook, have you noticed? It's like telling me, this is how your November was. And what are you going to do this month? How are you going to celebrate your December? Do you wish to share with? It's like, really? Back off. Damn, I don't even talk about that kind of shit to my pets. Really, Facebook? You want me to be? Nah. Um... Okay, next week I can talk about how your fucking prime minister made it legal for foreign immigrants to legally maintain their culture, mu mutilating women in particular. Ah. Hmm. Well. Uh, I would... Wow. I don't think that's cool at all. Who in the hell... <coughs> Excuse me. Your prime minister did that, Frumpy? You're going to have to send me a link on that, darling. I'm going to have to do a little research on that. Because as far as I'm concerned, you know, no chop, chop, chop. Okay? Unless she asks for it, you know, as in, in writing and says, yeah, I really want to have this done because Caitlyn Jenner comes to mind. Ugh. You know, kind of crazy. Did I get it? Did I get it? You freaking duck! Didn't want to be my friend. Fine. Fine. I know. <laughs> Chloe noticed it too. That I have a... Apparently Pocket thinks I'm a perv. <laughs> oh well. Y'all been listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on this Freaker Friday. And you know what? I know you're not joking, Frumpy, and I would really like to know. That's that's just, oh, yeah, and Facebook is getting very, yeah. It's getting very needy. It's getting, yes, Frumpy, I would I would love to have some articles about that so I can look into it and I go off on tangent. You know I can. I can, I can have a rant fest like none other because I, I can go all Glenda the Good Witch to get that country girl twine going on you know i can do that all in, all in one scream so in any case y'all been listening to grammy's rocket chair here on real liberty media.com channel three also on the rlm radio.xyz site the rlm tune in radio station the rlm spreaker channel and later on the rlm youtube channel Vinny is going to be coming up next he's going to be with uh, chuck ocelli is that correct, Vinny? I know I'm just kind of prattling right now, so you have plenty of time to let me know that if I'm right or wrong or indifferent. Um, but they're going to be on directly following me, and then right after Vinny, or later this evening, what is that, 11 o'clock Eastern Time? Grimner and Moose Girl with the Freaker's Ball, because it is a Freaker Friday night, don't you know? And Freaker's Ball is like, yeah, y'all need to be there. Or B square or whatever. Um, also, tomorrow at noon Eastern Time, or if you're going by the Cosmos Time, Central Time, which is where I'm at, <laughs> there will be a dork table. The dorks will be on the loose tomorrow at noon Eastern Time. So be sure to stick around for later this evening and for tomorrow. Also, JJ's, I'm sure, is going to be popping on from time to time playing some awesome tunage because he's that Scottish feller with access to all kinds of awesome tunage. 
Um, I don't know, let's see, if there's anything else really going on on Saturday. Sunday, though, at noon Eastern Time, Grimmy will be on with some blues for you. Hopefully, also, a rousing game of trivia in the chat. Hopefully, by then, I will also have my Chatzilla back up. <laughs> and then, directly following Grim will be Hal Anthony. <laughs> And he's going to open up a can of whoop-ass on your ass when he takes you behind the woodshed. So, those are going on Sunday early, Sunday evening, 7 o'clock Eastern Time. Gary Ellen, Gigi's Boo with A Road Less Traveled. I will be back on Wednesday, hopefully with some information from Frumpy as well, with the Wednesday edition of The Rocket Chair. But until then, I'm feeling a tickle coming on, so I probably ought to get the hell out of here. Y'all been listening, and thank you for putting up with me and my occasional little hacky wheezy that's trying to sneak back in. I need to get me some more tea and recoup and maybe find some supper. I'm getting a little hungry, don't you know? So, thanks for listening.